When it comes to feminism, who produces the most low-hanging fruit? Feminist academics or popular feminists? You'd be surprised. I wish I had to use facts and evidence to debunk feminist academics, but most of it unravels after the slightest application of some goddamn common sense. Take Hyde Gotzner Abendroth, for example, my bad pronunciation notwithstanding. The matriarchal concept of motherliness is not the romantic image so often portrayed in patriarchy, a fiction that devalues the notion of motherliness and makes it appear a merely sentimental. Patriarchy devalues mothers. When Alexis de Tocqueville wrote in his book, Democracy in America, he said that the Americans do not think that men and women have either the duty or the right to perform the same offices, but they show an equal regard for both their respective parts. And though their lot is different, they consider both of them as beings of equal value. That devalues the notion of motherliness. It's also why the Virgin Mary is a venerated saint among Catholics, simply because she is the mother of the divine. The status of being a mother being lifted into sainthood. Mother. This is also why fertility has always been held as a divine aspect of women, as exampled by the many goddesses of fertility, such as Beve, Aphrodite, Turan, Aditi, Hathor, Frasia, Epona, and many more. But somehow, being exalted into divinity is romanticizing motherhood. It isn't really appreciating mothers. Matriarchal societies are consciously consciously built upon maternal values and motherly work. And this is why they are much more realistic than patriarchies. If they were more realistic, then there would be more of them. This model is much more appropriate to the human condition than the way patriarchies conceptualize motherhood and use it to make women, and especially mothers, into slaves. Someone needs to tell Quentin Tarantino that Django Unchained is unrealistic. I mean, having someone hold complete control over your life with the ability to choose whether you live or die, forcing you into degrading animalistic acts of labor and violence, that's not slavery. Slavery is when a man takes a woman to a church or a government official and makes a promise, such as the one from the Book of Common Prayer published in 1552, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony, love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health. Slavery, according to Alex Tocqueville's Democracy in America, is when women are never compelled to perform the rough labor of the fields or to make any of those laborious efforts which demand the exertion of physical strength. Slavery is when women exchange goods and services in the domestic realm, helping to perform the arduous task of keeping house for the monetary and moral support of their husband, who is completely responsible, both legally and morally, for all of her actions, according to William Blackstone's commentary on the laws of England published in 1765 with explicit mention that violence is never to be used against women. Not to mention that women who have been mistreated by their husbands have had the power to divorce them since the 18th century before Christ as enumerated in the Code of Hammurabi. And use it to make women, and especially mothers, into slaves. Come on, boys! The way you lollygagging around here with them picks and them shovels, you'd think it was 120 degrees. Can't be more than 114. <laughs> this is the subject of modern matriarchal studies, which investigate and present matriarchal societies from all over the world. Contrary to common belief, None of these is a mere reversal of patriarchy. Rather, they are all gender egalitarian societies, and many of them are fully egalitarian. Oh, wow. They're egalitarian? Well, well tell me more. How exactly do we achieve this status as a gender egalitarian society in your eyes? The intended effect is that all inhabitants of a village or town 
are related to each other by birth or by marriage. This shapes a society that sees itself as a big clan where everybody is mother or sister or brother to everybody else. Notice how the role of the father is explicitly left out of that description. Mother or sister or brother. Well, there you have it, folks. Mothers are degraded and women are enslaved by patriarchy. And the only way to have a truly equal society is to destroy the role of the father. Wait a minute. Don't bring anyone mother into this. She ain't here. If it wasn't for your mother, you wouldn't be here. So remember, when you put down one mother, you put down mothers all over the world.